I want to give my thoughts on if you should just invest in Bitcoin or if you should diversify and how I approach diversification in the cryptocurrency market. Now, some people would say, why don't you just invest in Bitcoin? Because you're going to be insulated from the harsh down moves, more or less, in comparison to the altcoins, or so it seems here in the last, you know, whatever years, to tell you the truth. Um, and then also, it's encapsulating such a large portion of the cryptocurrency market. Right now, it has like 54% dominance that you're pretty much encompassing everything. So there's a few reasons why I don't just invest in Bitcoin. For starters, I'm actually surprised that it's first mover advantage and the fact that it was the OG coin, that it has remained in the number one spot. Just because technologically, 10 minute blocks, can do smart contracts, um, you know, it's really, it's been a very, very good shepherd for the technology and a very good use case example. Um, but it doesn't make the most sense now from a usability standpoint. And then you ask yourself, well, is any of this stuff really used? Or is it mainly just a speculative like pump and dump? Everything acts like a speculative pump and dump penny stock. And I can understand how somebody would kind of feel that way about crypto right now. Um, so really when it boils down to it, I wouldn't suggest somebody just invest in Bitcoin and Litecoin, for instance, because it's very similar code base. So one element of diversification, I would say, is code base. Like you want to get different code bases. So something like Monero has a different code base. Something like Steam or EOS or BitShares, those have different code bases. And um, Zcoin has, well, sorry, uh, Zcash. Um, has different cryptography to it. So let's say if somehow the cryptography was broken or the underlying code base was broken, that then the other coins wouldn't be affected. Stuff that are DAGs, IOTA, Byteball, Nano, those are a different code base. They don't even use a blockchain. So those are different. So I actually own some IOTA, some Byteball, and some nano so i've kind of got the dags covered like i've got a little piece of each of those and um, some of that was actually airdrop the pipe ball was airdropped i only own a little bit of iota and the one i went a little deeper on was nano so there's that then as far as delegated proof of stake chains that are platforms i do own steam eos tron and right now, I don't really have a position in BitShares. I used to. I don't really at this point. Because things kind of go in cycles. And I feel like that while BitShares has been a very, very good use case for delegated proof of stake and um, the initial kind of like, uh, what should I say, like foundation for that technology, um, I've noticed that younger people aren't interested in bit shares. I know that seems like a weird way to like look at crypto investments, but I think for technology in general, you have to look at what young people are interested in. Let's take Snapchat for instance. I mean, it seems a little bit off, off topic, but I think that it actually m makes a lot of sense. I was like, why was everybody, and a lot of times it was like, younger kids i noticed like the college crowd like really like snapchat sorry i was like out of frame anyway i noticed that a lot of um college kids like snapchat and every time i looked at snapchat it looked like something that a 12 year old would have liked it, it didn't it wasn't intuitive it seemed like really quirky um, but they were into it so i was like i wanted to kind of figure it out um and i was sort of interested in it from the aspect that, you know, if young people are into it and it seems to be this like new trend, like why is that? And I think that the main thing, it was, it was allowing a more direct interpersonal communication between two people versus being a social network that maybe kind of posted stuff like more publicly. It was more like, well, I'm just talking to my like very, very close knit friends and talking to people individually instead of like Facebook, like kind of everybody was seeing it that's the most I could arrive to. So anyway, I want to be on the trends that like, that 
kind of everybody's into, but obviously like the next generation is maybe gonna push it like over that next threshold. So it's like, well, does the younger generation, are they interested in cryptocurrency in general? And I'll say yes. It seems like everybody gets this. The generation that doesn't get it, um, I think a lot of times people that were in the silver and gold generation, there's a lot of those people that you would think would be more interested in it, but it's been kind of um, trashed by people like Peter Schiff. And so if they were a big follower of someone like Peter Schiff, they don't, they'll put more value in a tangible like, you know, silver eagle or silver maple, maple leaf or a, a golden maple leaf or, you know, they'll like boolean gold, boolean silver. They're more into that and they don't trust this thing that would be a digital coin. So I'm saying like, sometimes people over 65, 70, and, and maybe you're watching this video and maybe you're in that age demographic. So it's by no means to exclude you, that's awesome. If you're watching this and you're interested in cryptocurrencies, but it seems like the, the millennial generation is the generation that really, really, really likes crypto. And then we obviously hope that the younger generations also like it. So just within cryptocurrency though, I've noticed that a lot of the people promoting BitShares are actually like older than the millennial generation. I know that seems like a really weird thing to say, but this is just kind of what I think. Also on Steam, I noticed that there were not many people, even in their early 20s, who really liked Steam, that were really on that platform. A lot of times it seemed like, and, and part of it was because there was an unfair distribution and there was all these other issues with it, that the core group of people who were, who were like really, really into Steam and were like kind of popular on Steam, were between like 35 and 50. And that always worried me. That always worried me because you did not have the younger people, like college age kids, getting on Steam. So that was actually a big worry to me. But anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. So one of the main things I wanna say is for diversification is code base, code base, and then what is the um, cryptocurrency used for? So if you look at something like Ripple and um, Ripple and Stellar, I classify those as the same and they're from the same lineage. And um, you know, basically that they would be a transactional network. Now, what does that mean in everybody's everyday life? It may mean nothing. Personally, I don't like Ripple. And how many people watching this video right now who have owned Ripple have ever ran any kind of wallet or anything on their own computer. Most of the people investing in Ripple are just letting that hang out on the exchanges. And that's me too. Like anytime I've owned Ripple, it's been at such a negligible amount and I didn't want to piss around, like run some sort of wallet. People say, well, that's a lot of the people in cryptocurrency in general. And I say, yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like people who invested in other cryptocurrencies were more likely to, you know, take that investment to an offline mechanism, whether it was a software wallet or a hardware wallet or something else. Um, but with Ripple, it always seemed to be something that people left hang. Um, so code base and what it's used for. So when I look at, um, you know, let's say the platforms, Ethereum, EOS, you know, Icon, Lisk, Ethereum Classic, you know, these are smart contract platforms and they're, they're, I put them in the same category out of that, so I diversify in that. And then even if crypt, if currency is the main application that that coin is supposed to be doing, then I look, is it anonymous or not? So within the currencies, I would put Monero, Zcash, and Dash in the same category. Now, I don't wanna start like a tribal argument of, you know, Monero is superior to Dash or Dash is superior to Monero, da, da, da. I don't care. I own all three. I'll stay diversified with those. And um, within those, you have different code bases. Dash is a different code base than Monero. So you have diversification within your privacy coins. 
So that's just kind of the way I think, but in the end, and I did a video on this previously, a person could easily diversify by just opening up a Kraken account and literally buying almost everything that Dash offers minus Tether, and you would get everything that's in the top 10. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything about, you know, Bitcoin, SV, um, you know, whatever. If, if you bought it, you bought it, whatever. Or if you have it, that's cool. Um, but at the end of the day, like if you just, if you just went and you just bought like the top 10 cryptocurrencies or you just bought the top 20 cryptocurrencies, you would actually be well diversified because you'd have Stellar and Ripple, which would be, you know, transactional network plays. And then you'd have pure currency plays that are on the same code base like Litecoin, Bitcoin. And then you would have, you know, you'd have platforms like Ethereum, you'd have platforms like EOS, um, which are different code bases, even in between them, those. And then uh, you would just actually be very well diversified from a code base standpoint and from a functionality standpoint and what it was trying to do and how it's marketed. So anyway, that's just my views on diversification. Hope you guys like that and hope that the Snapchat thing didn't like lose you guys. But what do you think? Like how, and you don't have to obviously say how old you are, but you know, if people just say like kind of general, what generation are you in? I'm in the millennial generation. Um, is there anybody watching this video who is maybe in the older generation past millennial or the younger generation that's in college right now? I'm just kind of curious um, if you don't want to leave comment, obviously you don't have to do whatever you want. It's a free country. It's a free world. And we are trying to achieve absolute freedom. We are trying to get super bitty rich here. So if you would, or if you like my content, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on all social media at Brian Phobos, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Steam it. See you guys later.